I've recently acquired a ton of new track. But what am I going to use it for? Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Moller Railway. I'm Charlie. Every year or so, with the layout, I kind of hit a wall and I think to myself, I shouldn't have done the track plan that way, I should have done it this way. Well, this time I've been forced to change the track plan because of my left knee. You see, sadly, this layout is a crawl under and that isn't such a good idea when you um, starting uh, to get a little older, let's say. Um, a lot of people have suggested, you know, that why don't people just have a flap to save all that? Well, I wanted a 12 lane fiddle yard just here. Um, and that really wouldn't work because be behind the fiddle yard then would be the scenic section and that whole thing would have to come up and come down. Besides that, when you're on the inside, the first thing you need is the tool that you've left on the outside. And it is an absolute nightmare and I tend to stack things up on top of here so if I'm on the inside I can reach them and on the outside. So it just this ends up being more like a tool board. But if I'm not going to have a crawl under, what am I going to do? Well, I think it's quite obvious that I have to chop out a section to be able to walk straight in and come straight out. And that means having a couple of loops on the layout so it will come around and then around the loop and go back or that sort of effect. Of course I'm not the first person to have this issue and only recently on Facebook sadly I didn't know the, know the chap's name but someone else was mentioning that he was 60 going 62 and his knees have had exactly the same problem. I really noticed it when I started wiring up the double slips and the points under these boards here for the freight yard. Another thing that you might not be aware of is that camera that you're watching this through is actually quite a large camera and sits on a large tripod. And when you're doing a piece like this outside of the layout and the next piece is inside the layout, then I have to take it all apart and put it on top of the layout or try to slide it underneath, reassemble it and crack on. Again, not such a good idea. So I'll just show you the current layout and its design on any rail and then my proposals. Clearly not the most elegant method of entry. So at this end I've obviously got the, the viaduct and the tunnel area which is going to go on to the old um, fiddle yard um, and I've got my 125 and my Western Pullman running around and sadly two beautiful trains that in reality never met. Over in this side then I've got that hillside to finish off and the cutting through there and then as we look up to the other end where the station's going to go the up and down line split into four and uh, those four lines run up towards the other end with two tracks going straight through the centre which these trains are on now and the other two tracks um, are platforms one and two. Obviously you can see my so my logo is just park there out of the way while this refurb goes on and then back up the other end so here are those four tracks coming from the station and also behind the building is a fifth track which I wanted to use as a, as a shuttle and those four tracks go through two points um, into two tracks and then through another two points and a diamond crossing as they head into the area that I wanted to use as the, uh, the freight depot And the freight depot at either end has a set of crossings, a crossover with a single slip to allow the traffic into the freight depot, or oh, so that was my plan. But clearly that wasn't to be, and looking at this area now, it's this area here that I intend to remove. So yesterday I explored any rail a PC based um, system. I tried it with an Apple machine but didn't really, it wasn't really that workable. Now if you're used to this uh, this kind of setup here on any rail then please excuse my inexperience as you can see there are red markings on these curves because they're too tight but at the end of the day this is the layout. So this is the well in the centre um, where I stand and this is over where the viaduct is 
These are the two main lines that run through. This is the intended station area with platforms, one on this side, two on this side, and they come back out through the two sets of points into two lines, splitting again into, into four lines, and these two would run off into the fiddle yard, which would be hidden in this area here. As I showed you, this is the area to develop the industrial unit, and, um, and there's a, the, the two single slips that I mentioned. The hidden line around the back is, was proposed to be a shuttle, um, just to run from the fiddle yard in, into here, sort of carrying out stuff like um, parcel service and that sort of thing. As you remember, I was intending to build a, uh, a single track fly out, fly over to a branch line station which would sit above the fiddle yard. I still intend to build this second level, but it will come above this line here. Back over towards the viaduct and these two lines split into four. There's the up and down that go into the industrial area. And then these two lines here, which would join up with these two lines here through the eight, uh, through the 12 track fiddle yard. As I mentioned, when you're as soon as you're on the inside of here and you want something, you have to be a reading glasses, a drink or whatever. I scurry underneath this section here um, and it just wasn't conducive. It was a foolish thing to do. And all I can do is advise you if you're in the approaching your more senior years, let's say, um, don't be as foolhardy as I was and think that um, just because you're fit today means you'll scarper and under here in the, in, the, uh, in the future. Some people have mentioned using a little wheeled um, board, you know, sort of skateboard to get in and out. But to be perfectly honest, I just didn't think it was it was feasible at all. A couple of bits I didn't mention here. There was a head shunt here and an extra line brought, drawn out here, which again was probably going to use for a parcel service which I've yet to develop. So I've gone through the issues of what's wrong with it and, and I've mentioned that this is the area that I will choose to cut. Now I've cleared off the retaining wall from this side of the layout so all is revealed bare as it were. And I imagine you would know where these bits are. The room might be bigger than you realise and this is uh, it's worth noting that where this cabinet is with another load of model railway junk. And then if we swing around to the other side past the desk where I do my piece to camera, we come into another one of those bookshelves, which I believe will go. And then there is a space between that bookshelf filled with junk through that mirror, another tripod, some picture frames, and then we're up to the sink where I <laughs> wash my track. Now I can utilise this room for the layout. I don't like uh, the layout to take over the room completely because I do use it for other things such as uh, small meetings you know with um, local villagers and little charities that we kind of organise. But that's the room available. So how does this equate into a track plan? As an aside, I quite like any rail, and if you do uh, invest in it, you can lay so many pieces of track before you have to pay, and then I think it's I think it was forty five pounds. But hey, we are where we are, as was as I, as I often say. So this is the existing layout up here. We've seen where these two go into the um, the uh, industrial area, and this is where I'm proposing to cut through. I can't get rid of these little lines just the way the system works and my inexperience. So everything else stays the same and these lines as you probably figured out will come round and go into a helix. The area above the helix will be um, scenic and whether I put a, a station area here or an industrial unit or a TMD. So this whole area now opens up for me and this line here from the, uh, which was going to go originally to the branch station, will come in, will rise up an incline, go above this little shuttle line, and then come back down and then hopefully join onto this line and go into the, the helix. So this area seems, seems reasonably straightforward. And this area here was that bookcase that I showed you on the left hand side. 
moving over to the right hand side the lines that went out these are the two lines that go into the industrial unit except this time now we're going to come down towards that sink area where I showed you and these will come down through the hillside that's that's located here now the bookcase which is parallel with this bookcase kind of sits here at the moment so that will go um, the hillside will continue down and hide these two tracks completely so once they go into this tunnel mouth here they won't be seen again they will just trundle straight down into the, the helix well one will go down obviously one will come up and then these other two lines um, will move around because I've made some hillsides here so I'll just move the hillsides a little bit and these will come down again into an open area and I can either use this as a TMD or an industrial unit or again a, um, a branch line station but looking at it whoops wrong way but looking at it as a whole it develops the layout fairly well and makes the most of the room I can't allow it to take over the whole room and bring this one down here but it will allow me easy access to walk in I can get the camera tripod in and out quite easily it just seems to work obviously what I've got to work on now is what I'm going to do in when these two areas here um, whether I would choose to do like say industrial or TMD or station um, but it's uh, the world's my oyster really on this and also you know we can have some some town scenery coming in which would be a nice thing to see but what happens underneath this section well, if I just close this one down a moment and then bring up the fiddle yard there's my phone as usual and here's the fiddle yard section underneath whoops wrong way these marks here are just something called glue marks it stops me moving the whole thing around so we it would come down um, from the uh, upper level into the lower fiddle yard area and um, this is an area here which is uh, quite vulnerable because this is under the viaduct so the clearances between this and the viaduct board above it is only about sort of four or five inches so any point work I've pulled back from the viaduct so there's nothing to go underneath that can go wrong underneath as it were now I wanted through the fiddle yard I wanted a center track that will go straight through and I can cross from either this up line into it or I can cross from say this down line into the center center track so any train in any fiddle yard can go up to the top and return and go on to the other side which is particularly poignant when I want to use the 125 unit or my Pullman where I can lay them up in the center the other thing I want to do in this center line here is I can install an automatic wheel cleaner and this way I can send any track I, any train I want through the wheel cleaning system so to do that obviously this is the, da the down line it needs to split through a, uh, a point into a Y point which feeds both ways and then we go up into here now this is by no mean cast in stone I think we've got sort of 12 or 13 lines here at the moment and um, these distances are quite short now I really need eight feet uh, sorry seven feet for a decent sized train and here I've only got one two three four five six seven kind of seven and a half eight ish so these points aren't cast in stone some of them will be pulled back into this area here and then put a curved point in to start this uh, this fan work uh, earlier and exactly the same will happen on the other side the helixes will be um, manufactured for me I am not a carpenter that can turn out a helix in a couple of days that's just really isn't my bag so I'm going to get a company in to, to build the helix and put them up in situ and I will make a video of that happening so if they're the quite sort of thing that you might be interested in you can see the construction I like Hornby set track for helixes and this is third radius curve on the inside and fourth radius curve on the outside now P curve has always, always been my favorite track but Pico do, Pico do not make a double radius um, fourth double length fourth radius curve uh, section and I believe the Hornby one is an R8262 and what you can't see me now doing is flicking through 
No, that's the wrong book anyway. But I think it's a, um, an 8262 um, uh, reference number. Um, quite expensive. Then there's not many in the country. I've ordered a load from from Hattons. Um, sadly, they're going to be a while to be delivered. And if you have any spare, you know, sort of six, perhaps eight of these Hornby double fourth radius curved pieces, then email me, um, and um, perhaps we can uh, we can do a little bit of business. I have all the track I require for the third radius on both, which is obviously 64 pieces. Um, because there are four layers per helix, eight pieces per um, per layer, so four eights of 32, double 62, because so the two helix is 64, and so that's what I need. Um, yes, yeah, seems quite doable, um, but it, of course it's all about time. So here is the uh, that third radius curve. There's a uh, 32 of those, another 32, and sadly. Um, just 16 of the uh, of the double radius Hornby. Oh, hey, I'm sure I'll I'll land on my feet somehow. Um, so the track's coming along, and this is why I haven't done any videos lately on b the building of the layout because I've had the feelers out there to get the track to develop it more, and there was no point in trying to um, sort out this um, industrial unit. Um, when I knew full well at the end of the day that with, with a, a problem with my knee I'd have to sort of just rip it up again. Here are two boards from the very old Chadwick TMD and these are six foot by three foot boards and they will be trimmed down to six foot by 30 inches and will form the two boards for the corners of the fiddle yard and, th and by doing that by, I can lay all the track on these two boards and the point work underneath prior to installing it so I can tip them on their ends, put it all on, get all the point work done, size it all up and then all I need to do then is to insert a board about four foot between these two boards with just straight track so that will be easier, much easier to do in situ because the worst thing you want to do is get on your hands and knees and start getting under boards especially with only an 18 inch clearance for a fiddle yard. So I can get those major components constructed prior to installation. It's just that these boards, they are a bit naff really, because it's only 6mm ply and I like to use 12mm ply, but for the fiddle yard they'll be just fine. But it does mean um, cutting off 6 inches of the board and then running, obviously re, um, reattaching the support timbers. And they are a bit bendy as you may have seen on previous videos. So at least nothing currently will go to waste. The hillsides um, I will get a, a usual kind of carving knife and get underneath there and lift those out because they will just simply um, move around. So what have I got left to do? Um, well on the uh, helix track for each loop of the helix I'm going to have two droppers and then each two levels will become one block. Um, so all that's got to be um, figured out and wired in. If you like the program anyway or by all means download that you can download it for free um, and I can, you, you can use up to sort of 50 pieces of track or whatever before the program locks up and then you have to buy the, buy the £45 um, subscription uh, to continue, not subscription is it, it's a one-off payment, um, before you can continue with it. But it, I think it's a, a cracking piece of software. I didn't get on too well with the Apple, um, the Apple version. Anyway, enough said about that. Um, if you do own a, a Helix and you've put a scenic um, area on the top of it, then um, I would appreciate some, some photographs of it just to give me a bit of inspiration on how I can do mine. Um, it's something I've been kind of thinking about, but um, I'd just like to see how other people have coped with, you know, scenicing up the top of their helix. And of course, if you've got any of that R8626 double fourth radius curved Hornby track, then please uh, drop me an email. The email address is at the end of the video and perhaps we can sort something out. Where do you go from here with the, with the channel? Well, what I think I'm going to try to do is do one week on um, the build program and then one week on something else, such as, I don't know, something like Decoder Pro, some, well, some piece of software or a bit of um, you know, Stay Alive and that kind of stuff. And if you've got any suggestions, then please leave them in the comments below. And regarding the whole rebuild, please leave a comment and give it a thumbs up. I'd much appreciate it. So there we go. 
nothing left to do um, really but to thank the people who donate to the channel and the patrons and because without these people the channel wouldn't exist i wouldn't be able to buy all this gear in um, and make the videos and devote so much time to it so if you want to become a patron there's the link if you want to subscribe there's the button and a video there and there and i'll see you next week take care thanks a lot bye bye <laughs>